Welcome to Coverage Over Coffee, hosted by AI Mutual. I am Agent Ivory, and here we talk about various insurance topics in a fun and informative way that is easy to understand. Enjoy hot coffee and delicious pastries with like-minded people that are excited about creating generational wealth for their families. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the channel. special one because this is a holiday season. So today we are actually going to cover tis the season to be insured. As you can see, I am on vacation. I hope everybody else is. Look at this beautiful view of this beautiful lake. <laughs> but um, I definitely wanted to talk about tis the season to be insured. Uh, first things first, I want to wish everyone a very, very Merry Christmas, especially those people with families who have kids. You know, it's really for the kids, right? We don't really care about all the Santa Claus and everything else. Um, we do it for the kids. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. I think yesterday was, oh, I want to say it right, Eretissi. <laughs> Eretitissi Day, and that's by Tariq Nasheed. So thank you so much for leading the way and having us celebrate on December 24th. So this is going to be an annual thing for us. Um, also, we're just excited that we are over the 600 mark with our channel. So thanks so much to our sister D Tubman for getting the word out. Please, 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 everybody, subscribe to the channel, share it with everyone you know, family and friends. Everyone you know has insurance, right? And if they don't, they need it. <laughs> so they need to be tuned into this channel. Like it, comment, subscribe, share on YouTube. Uh, excuse me, share on Facebook, all your uh, social mediums there. Um, we're just really excited. We're pushing to a thousand. We want to get to a thousand before the end of this year. And I know it's possible, okay? So with your help, we can get there. But a couple of things or several things we want to talk about today. Again, tis the season to be insured. We have so many people that I hopefully, I hope are, are insured all over America. Of course, as you know, we have the massive blizzard that's happening right now across most parts of America. Um, also, on last week, uh, there were two bills that were signed uh, in Florida uh, to give assistance to those victims of Hurricane N and Hurricane Nicole. And then, of course, what I have here, as you see, this beautiful family, because I personally love the Miller family, okay? Um, but we want to talk about generational wealth. I know everyone's talking about it from, um, you know, more of an argumentative type of way or dispute with them. But I just want to talk about it from a generational wealth, from an insurance perspective. So I hope everybody has their favorite cup of coffee. I know I got mine when I was traveling to uh, my destination here. I thought I was going to a Starbucks, but it actually got bought out. Uh, with, well, first of all, it went out of business, I should say, three years ago. And then two years ago, it was purchased uh, by an Italian family. So you'll see that um, in the review, my cafe review. So I also just want to keep everyone in prayer um, who may not be having the best holiday season. I know I was very upbeat uh, when starting this coverage over coffee session. However, I personally have friends uh, that I know that are having a hard time during this season because they have lost a loved one either recently or within the last year. Or sometimes this is just a season where um, those memories and traditions they think of that special person in our life. So I definitely want to keep you all in prayer um, who may be struggling during this time. Also, it brings me to what we're talking about today, what is happening in this particular article. It's about Buffalo. And this is, of course, being brought to us by kxnet.com. But how I mentioned about the blizzard that's happening in a lot of states right now. So I want to talk about this because, you know, from an insurance perspective, you know, this comes into play when it comes, uh, when we're talking about claims. The first thing I hear about this is claims from 
all types of level. You know, unfortunately, here we see that 24 people thus far in America have been killed. So those are liability potential claims if they would happen to be in a car. Um, then also, of course, auto insurance, home insurance, you know, um, those all come into play as well. So let's talk about what's happening here in America. So millions of people hunkered down against a deep freeze Sunday morning to ride off the winter storm that has killed at least 24 people across the United States and is expected to claim more lives after trapping some residents inside uh, houses with heaping snowdrifts and knocking out power to several hundred thousand homes and businesses. You know, the number of homes without power was like in the millions this weekend over many states. So I believe towards the end of this article, it will tell you that a lot of those homes have been restored with power. However, as of today, um, the afternoon and um, Sunday on Christmas Day, there are a lot of uh, families who still don't have power. So can you imagine, you know, how they're spending Christmas Day? It's really sad. But basically, uh, about 60% of the U.S. population face some sort of winter weather advisory or warning. And that is so true because even here in Texas, um, over, I would say maybe it was like last Thursday, Friday, I believe, it the temperatures just dropped so low, the coldest I've ever seen it in Texas, you know, um, and, you know, that's very, the good thing is that it just didn't rain, right? I feel like if it rained, it would have just been sleet everywhere. It would have been a mess, right? But since it was just cold, I think overall that helped out Texas. Now, I believe there were some people um, who did go without power for like a day, maybe, um, but it's nothing close to the winter get in that we had last year. So that's a plus. However, but look at this. It's really sad though. For other states, there's a bomb cyclone that hit everybody, you know, staring up blizzard conditions, heavy, heavy winds and snow. I don't know about you, but I've been seeing a lot of people on Facebook that I personally know, and they have ventured out outside today. It just looks crazy. It looks apocalyptic, you know, it's just really scary out there. So anyone who's dealing with that currently, please Stay safe, okay, first and foremost. And um, I know that there's a lot of people who want to help others that are in need. During this time, I always think about homeless individuals, you know. I think about maybe uh, individuals who probably can even really afford, you know, to pay electrical bills or, you know, purchase those emergency supplies. You know, I always think of them first, you know, during this time. So let's talk about what's happening. So look at this. Six foot snow drifts, right, has happened to thousands of houses. Um, it's just really crazy. A lot of the cities are dark without power, okay? And we're talking about New York, in particular Buffalo, but we're talking about New York, okay? Even some wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Wind gusts at this speed, 40 to 50 miles per hour, can actually take shingles off of homes. So I would definitely advise you. Once this is over, to definitely schedule, especially if you see shingles on the ground and you're not sure if they came from your home or a neighbor's home, definitely contact your insurance carrier to see if you can have an insurance adjuster, a field property adjuster come out to your home to inspect your roof and to just do a 360 on your home just to make sure everything is intact. You're paying for this insurance. You want to make sure everything is good, okay? But this type of wind speed, it definitely can affect your home. So again, some more sad conditions here about individuals, uh, you know, passing away. Um, but I just want, I'm, I'm just bringing up this article just to let everyone know that we have a lot of our American, you know, brothers and sisters struggling during this holiday season. So if there's any way that you can help them, either if it's with a donation, maybe to a local church or organization that you trust, um, definitely do that. Check on your family, check on your friends, make sure that they are good. Um, you know, anything that we can send up there probably in the upcoming weeks, you know, please uh, stay tuned. I'll definitely post it on my page as well. So that way we can start helping everybody out. Okay. And then I just want to just uh, scroll down a little bit more here and just to show you how widespread this is. So of course we know that it's happening in the Midwest, up North, 
on the northeastern states, but then even in Florida, right? They even hit 43 degrees in West Palm Beach, and that's very, very unheard of. And then the temperature even dropped to where they even had freezing sleep. So this is kind of a different um, winter than we have ever experienced. So um, as we know, for people who believe in global warming, don't believe in global warming, I don't really know. But what I do know is, is that our winter is, our, excuse me, our, um, our seasons are changing. Our, you know, these storms are starting to become more often and they're starting to become, uh, you know, a lot intense, more intense. So this is very important for those individuals uh, especially homeowners, when it comes to your homeowners policies, please make sure you double check to make sure you have the coverage that you need to protect you in adverse situations like this. Even those who are renters, make sure you have renter uh, uh, policy. All right, so switching gears here, I wanted to follow back up with you and provide you with an update. In my coverage over coffee session or episode nine, I actually talked about insurance and rising inflation. And we specifically talked about how inflation is really affecting the insurance uh, homeowners in particular uh, in the state of Florida. So we did talk about in that episode that Governor Ron DeSantis was expected to have a special session. They stated December 12th, no later than the 16th. As you see here, it did happen on December 16th uh, where they were gonna have to have a major talk about what they need to do to stabilize that state. Uh, for those who tuned in on that session or if you did not get to listen to the episode, I highly recommend you do. But what we talked about, just to kind of sum it up, was that, hey, these hurricanes are really killing, you know, the insurance industry down there. You know, a lot of insurance carriers are going out of business. You know, they are going, they're becoming insolvent. They're leaving insurance owners like homeowners, like, you know, they're so concerned. They're leaving them without coverage. It's hard for them to even obtain coverage, you know, and then once they do obtain coverage, I mean, it could be double what they're paying in premiums annually. So um, this crisis is a state of emergency for DeSantis. I was like, regardless if you're a Democrat, Republican, I said the good news is that we do know that he's trying to run for the presidential office in 2024. So in my mind, I looked at it as a good thing that he would do right by at least the, his um, constituents in Florida. Because if he doesn't do right uh, by them, then no one in the entire United States is even going to look his way uh, to become president, right? So I do see this helping the um, the residents there in Florida. And so as you can see here, he did come through. He did follow through on what he stated he was going to do. It says, Governor, and this is coming from floridagov.com, okay? Uh, Governor Ron DeSantis signs two bills to support disaster relief and help stabilize Florida's property insurance market. I mean, they need it. Last week, um, the CEO from Citizens stepped down in Florida. I mean, it's just so much going on. It's because of all these insurance claims, you know, coming in and they really don't have the funds to go out, you know, to, to pay for all of these things. So just to sum this up, he did sign two bills uh, following a special session that took place last week, actually, uh, Governor DeSantis signed Senate Bill SB4A, which provides $750 million for additional disaster relief to Floridians following hurricanes Anne and Nicole. So they're dealing with two major hurricanes in the state. The governor also signed Senate Bill 2A the most significant property insurance reform bill in recent history, which helps to stabilize property insurance market, increase the competition, and strengthen consumer protections. So let's go ahead and look at that Senate Bill 4A, and then we'll come back and look at the 2A. 
you know, it's interesting here. What you're going to see here is just like a summary, but I would like to see everything really in detail because sometimes I just feel people, you know, just say things to make the citizens feel great, especially since we're approaching the holiday season. This happened last week. They want everybody to have a great, you know, um, Christmas holiday and a New Year's Eve, you know, hey, I'm moving forward. Sounds great. However, you know, I just want to see what's in the details. Okay. And we don't have all that yet. We just have this high level, you know, information at this time. So the $750 million is broken down like this. Okay. 350 million of it is to assist local governments with FEMA public assistance match requirements. 150 million is to support affordable housing hurricane recovery efforts. So that breaks down to $60 million to assist Floridians with recovery, including home repairs, relocation costs, and insurance deductibles. This is huge because, excuse me, a lot of people can't even afford their deductibles. A lot of people are hurting right now. So sometimes to have cheaper premiums, they will get higher deductibles, meaning that, you know, if they want their premiums to be low, they may say, oh, please give me a $5,000 deductible, but they only have $500 in the bank, right? So how are they even going to be able to um, you know, pay the deductible. Now we do know in the insurance industry, they're not like having to cut a check, you know, to the insurance carrier. Of course, the insurance carrier would just subtract, you know, their deductible from whatever their payout is. So let's just say they're supposed to get, you know, $15,000 back, right? Because that's how much um, it comes out to be, then they would subtract the $5,000 deductible and then send them a check of $10,000. Well, that sounds great. However, what the insurance carrier is basically saying, it's going to take $15,000 to restore your home. So $10,000 isn't going to cut it, right? So there's still, that homeowner still needs to make sure they have $5,000 somewhere to be able to cover the difference. And most people don't. So that's really good that they're helping to, uh, you know, if this is true, right, they're helping to assist with insurance deductibles, including home repairs. That's really major. And then, of course, relocation costs. Um, and, th and that actually is like ALE, and that's additional um, living assistance. And basically, if your home is destroyed, you cannot live there because it's inhabitable. So you need to be able to live off-site somewhere else. And so again, if you do not have, um, if you did not select the coverage, right, um, in your insurance policy, then that's not even an option for you. Um, so, but you would still need this benefit. So it looks like they're going to assist with that. Then $90 million for the Rental Recovery Loan Program. Okay, I would love to hear more about that. That's pretty vague there, but we'll see what that is. $150 million for beach uh, renourishment and shoreline fortification. So that's great. Um, $100 million to support beach uh, renourishment and erosion control for beaches impacted by Hurricane Anne and Nicole. You know, we had something like that with Hurricane Harvey along the coast in Texas. So I know a little bit about that. And then $50 million for new hurricane restoration reimbursement grant program, homeowners with fortifying their homes. So again, this is going to be for those who are living along the coast. Okay. Probably not really for those in the city because it says the shoreline fortification, but more or less those property owners that live along the coast, they do have some assistance for them there. Um, let's go down a little bit more. $100 million of the $750 million is for new hurricane stormwater and wastewater grant program to repair damaged infrastructure to protect public health and the environment. So this doesn't really sound like this is going to homeowners, right? This sounds more um, like going to commercial or businesses or maybe the city. Um, and then lastly, provides property tax refunds and extend deadlines and discounts for Floridians whose home were destroyed or rendered un. 
habitable. So that's really great because this is the time, you know, for everyone to pay their property taxes. And so it's very difficult to do if you're still trying to get your home restored um, or if your home is no longer there, right? What if your home is just gone, you know? So you just have a lot of other issues to worry about than property taxes, right? You probably, that's probably last on your list. So they're given um, extensions. They're also giving uh, tax refunds. Again, all this sounds fantastic. I would love to see what the details are. Once that website comes out, I definitely am going to go through it with a find comb, you know, and see like what makes you eligible to be able to get these refunds because it always sounds great, but then sometimes it can disqualify people, right? Or sometimes people don't get the information soon enough and then they miss the deadline. You know, so once I get this information, I will definitely post this up for you. I'm not going to speak about the toll relief, but the property insurance part, I am. So their goal is to increase competition and strengthen consumer protections. I, you know, they feel, and we all know this from Economics 101, the more competition you have, you know, the cheaper everything is, right? Prices go down. And as we know right now in the property insurance sector, you know, yes, it's kind of crazy, you know, yes, uh, insurance carriers, there's a lot of them, but the prices are not going down, you know, they're going up, the premiums are going up. And then even for the carriers that become insolvent, yes, they're going out of business, Right. But guess what? Premium's still going up. So I think now they're trying to have additional companies to be able to enter this market uh, so that way it can lower premiums. So we'll see. The thing is, you know, do companies want to take on this risk? Because, I mean, Florida is not moving anywhere on the map. Florida is still positioned, you know, in the southeast part of America, and it's still uh in harm's way for hurricanes to strike at any time. And so as we have just spoken about when we talked about the blizzards and how this is a different year, you know, and unfortunately every year just seems to increase with intensity. It's the same thing happens, you know, with the state as well. So, you know, it would just be interesting to see if there are going to be some, um, you know, uh, insurance carriers that come down there. But basically also too, what this bill does, it de disincentivize frivolous property insurance litigation, which harms consumers, holds insurance companies accountable for unfair trade practices that hurt policyholders, and speeds up claim process for consumers. Um, that's always great. Speed is great, but you really need for it to be correct. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, hopefully there's a balance there and hopefully that is done. And the last one here increases transparency in the claims process. Again, this all sounds fantastic. I just want to know how they're going to do that, you know, and how they're going to do that across all of these various companies that have their own way that they do business. So just wanted to show you that. And what we're going to do now is go back to 2A, okay? and see what's involved in that particular bill. So let's scroll down here. So, and that's kind of what we were talking about with the whole 2A, um, but just to kind of go into a little bit deeper, it says, 2A, property insurance is the most significant property insurance reform bill in recent history. Again, strengthening Florida's property insurance market by eliminating one-way attorney fees for property insurance claims, which will disincentivize frivolous lawsuits, which I just said, okay? Reduce the burden of excessive and predatory litigation, uh, which will help bring down costs for homeowners. That sounds great. Um, enhancing the Office of Insurance Regulation's ability to complete market conduct examinations of property insurers following a hurricane to hold insurance companies accountable and prevent abuse of the property appraisal process. Wow, this sounds really great. Are they going to hire a lot of people for this? You know, how are they going to pick and choose, you know, those claims, you know, to audit? Okay. Reducing timelines for insurers to get payments out the door and back into the hands of policyholders as they rebuild their lives. Again, this is really great. However, just from a claim adjuster's experience, it does take time, especially when there's a huge 
um, hurricane like this. This was a hurricane four for Hurricane Anne that came through, you know, so it takes time to get those experienced field adjusters out to the scene because they're coming all over from America to make their way to Florida to get out to those homes, to inspect them, to do the paperwork that they have to do to send to the desk adjusters to review, to make sure it's correct, uh, to be able to get the check out to the insurer. So, you know, the process to me already seems very streamlined. You know, I think they've reduce the whole checks. You know, I don't like the word checks anymore. They're actually doing payments, e-transfers now, you know, to make that quicker process, but it's still a process. So again, this sounds great. I would love to see how they're going to do this. And then lastly, building on reforms passed earlier this year by committing additional funding to provide temporary reinsurance support to help stabilize our market. So Basically, reinsurance is, you know, those companies that may have to go out of business, you know, they have to still pass on, you know, um, that book of business to someone else to be covered. So that's where that reinsurance comes from. But again, they're taking on a lot of risk and there's just a lot of risk in Florida right now. So um, I'm really excited, though, at least this, this is in place. It gives, you know, the citizens of Florida some type of reassurance, something to actually hold um, Governor Santos, you know, accountable for so he can actually come through on this because what's going to happen next year? They're going to have another hurricane possibly and another one. So we have to make sure something is in place that um, protects the consumer, but it also has to work for the insurance companies. You know, it's just a catch 22. It has to work for both parties because they're also in the business. It is a business of making money, right? But at the same time, you know, uh, consumers are purchasing this product to protect them. So it needs to be available at an affordable cost to them to be able to do those things. So um, just wanted to make sure that I follow back up with you on that because I told you that I would. So Floridians, like they always say, I love country when he say help is on the way. <laughs> help is on the way. Okay. And I'll keep you posted once I get more information. Also with, you know, we just see them succeed because we just feel their success is a reflection of our success. I don't really care um, how, what anyone else feels about it. Like I get excited when I see people like this who come from nothing, you know, make it big. And then maybe I'm just a little bit more biased because everyone from my dad's side of the family is from New Orleans, you know, so I grew up on Master P. You know, I grew up on No Limit. So I just really love him in particular. And I have to admit that I know more about him than his son. But one thing that he's always stood for is he's always been about family, you know? And I remember growing up, even hearing about his extended family, which was No Limit Soldiers, and how they even have thanked him over the years, you know, for his uh, financial academy. You know, everybody's from the hood, you know? <laughs> and so they didn't really know how to spend their money. You know, they knew how to make money, right? They know how to flip money sometimes, right? But how to grow that money you know, um, from a more um, advanced financial standpoint, they didn't know how to do that. And, and I remember the dog actually thanking him for this. And, you know, same thing with Mia X, a whole lot of other people. And so he did talk about generational wealth. So I know he knows about generational wealth. Um, you know, um, he's really big on family. Like I said, I know he's filled with love. So when I hear about this feud, you know, there's probably so much that we just don't know as regular people, because we're not in their day-to-day -day lives. And of course we're getting a glimpse of it, but for me, I'm just all about generational wealth. And I'm like, whatever it is, his family, my family, your family, we have have to get over whatever few we have and come together because we are really in a very precarious time right now. I'm not sure if you're paying attention, but our world, just not America, is getting really bad. And it's not like, oh, getting 2008 bad. It's getting like, oh, 1930s bad. And nobody wants to tell you all that because they don't want to scare you, right? And I'm not here to scare you either, but I'm here to inform you so that way you can make, be proactive instead of reactive. This is not the time to be divisive or to have division within your family. This is the time to unite, to have that love, because we're all going to have to use 
someone else's talents and skills to be able to make it during this upcoming season. Okay. So what I talk about in my generational wealth courses, uh, a whole lot, but before I get into that, let's go ahead and get you caught up. There's a lot of things in here that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Again, there's this family feud and no, we're not talking about the fun show, right? (laughs) The fun show um, with Steve Harvey, but no, we're talking about a bad family feud right now. And so Romeo hits back, and this is coming from hiphopdx.com. Romeo Miller um, is calling out his father once again, okay? Um, just addressing their feud. So basically, you know, I actually follow Master P on his Facebook page as well. He did come out, you know, um, and address this. And and from my point of view, it, it did sound like he was choked up about it. I also follow his son too, though. So I'm hearing, I'm seeing both of this. And I remember when they both hit, I was like, what in the world is going on? Because those are not the type of uh, day-to-day posts, you know, or videos that they show. They are all about business. You know what I mean? Um, you know, whether Master P is promoting uh, someone's business or even his own business, or if he's going on tour, then you see little Romeo posting when he's acting in something um, because he does a lot of that. Stuff. So I'm kind of like, when this came out, I'm like, where did this come from? You know? Um, but anyways, keep, keep going here. He actually is uh, speaking uh, out against his father, right? And he has some very choice words. So let me just read what he says here. This is where the story or what I want to talk about from. He says, I have nothing to fear or lie about, uh, Romeo wrote. I want everyone to support my dad and his interviews, and then I'll follow back up and sit down with the same people with a lie detector test. And please stop with the sob story. This ain't about money. You know, no matter how much you take, I've never asked you to pay for any of my bills as an adult. I'm good, good. So, you know, uh, this has a lot. You have to probably follow the story about everything that's happening now. But, you know, basically, you know, when he was on these shows, I guess he never got paid for the shows that he was on. Um, You know, even when he had his singing career, he didn't really get paid. And I guess he had to pay his father's taxes. That's what allegedly is what's being said. Um, and then his father is saying that he needs to basically be a man, do things on his own. He has a college degree. He needs to do this, you know, so he needs to take care of his own bills. So he's kind of coming back saying that he is an adult. He's never asked you want to take care of his bills. But anyway, this is about how if anything ever happened to me or you, then this family has nothing. That's not generational wealth. And I'm tired of the deception. This interview showed me your true colors. Love ya, but I can't protect that. Take a page from Mike Tyson. I don't know if we should take Tyson. Okay. Your real truth will inspire even the next generation. Okay. And so that's basically what he said there. And um, let me scroll down a little bit more. Masterpiece comments. Uh, Romeo came during an interview with Nino Brown that was uploaded to you on Thursday. Okay, Brown told P, you can't give people things that they don't deserve or haven't earned because that'll create a sense of entitlement, which he believed applied to Romeo. And that is uh, what's been said a whole lot about Romeo is that he's just kind of like this rich kid, you know, grew up, you know, basically spoiled and he's entitled, right? He has had access to everything. Um, so Master P agreed, okay, so he did agree with that, okay, and he replied, what you going to do when I'm gone, like, what you going to do when I'm gone, uh, because this could have killed me, think about it, but social media people don't even look at how this started about the DJ and me posting RIP, but think about it, so because my daughter died, I can't say RIP to nobody, I'm going to stop right there and come right back, okay, because that's getting into another part that I want to talk about. Let's talk about this right here. Um, let me see. Maybe I screwed up too much. One second. Uh, I think it's just coming up right here. One second. Here it is right here. This is about if anything ever happened to me or you, then this family has nothing. Okay, this right here, this is why I just say we all need to get it together, especially as black families. We don't even have the financial luxury to have a feud. 
we can't even afford to have a few, you guys. And I'm talking about any black people. I'm talking about uh, people who are impoverished. I'm talking about middle class. I'm talking about the wealthy. I'm talking about the ultra rich. When you look at when you look at us as a collective, we are broke. Okay, we are so poor <laughs> that even. Um, everyone knows this, our politicians, and they don't care, but they do know that black people will have zero dollars. We will have zero net worth by 2053. Actually, it's going to be well before then because 2020 with the pandemic sped that up. And then everything that's happening right now with the Great Reset that nobody wants to tell you guys about is speeding it up. Okay. So we don't even have the luxury to talk about, uh, you know, fussing over anything. We need to be busy you know, working, hustling, doubling down, whatever we got to do to get this wealth together as a family, because that's the only way we're going to make it, you all, is together, is as a collective unit. Because right now we are headed to the ground, okay? We're headed to off of a financial cliff. Another thing, too, is, um, you know, this this is really sad me. It doesn't matter. I'm hearing you know, from them that they're saying that possibly they're living month to month, that they're, the family is broke. I don't even know if that's true. I thought, you know, from what I heard back in the day, that they have $500 million. I don't know. I guess, you know, again, I'm not in this family. I have zero clue. Even if this is true, that they're living month to month, which so many Americans are. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to make them feel bad for that. Because unfortunately, a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck every two weeks, right? So, but what I am saying is, you don't, no one has to leave their family in a situation where they're starting off from zero. So, I'm an insurance broker. I actually help create generational wealth for my clients. So, even if you are not a multimillionaire, if you're not a millionaire, you can still leave a million dollars for your family after you're gone. OK, you can actually leave a million dollars for them while you're here, you know, with living benefits, you know. Um, so I just don't really like to hear this that says if anything ever happened to me or you, excuse me, our family would have nothing. No, 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 no. If anything happened to I, your family should be OK because you should have life insurance policies in place. Uh, hello, time out. That should have already been done, you know. Um, so while you're healthy. Master P, Little Romeo, because both of you all are fathers, okay? That's when you need to make sure that you have your life, uh, your life insurance policies in place. You don't wait till you're sick, you old, you decrepit, and then try to ask for a you know, million, $10 million life policy. You're not getting it. Deny, application denied. <laughs> and I know for a fact, Master P understands about the importance of life insurance policies because that's how No Limit Records got started. I was a young girl when I heard about that, didn't even know too much about life insurance policies back then, but I knew it was genius that he flipped $10,000 into $500 million um, mogul business. You know, I thought that was amazing. And the fact that his grandfather left him money again, I'm young, I, don't, I didn't know anything all is about that. But I was like, wow, that's so amazing that his grandfather thought enough of him to leave him $10,000. I don't know how much the overall policy was, but he made sure that his grandchild left $10,000. So so remind so remember what I just said, his grandfather thought enough of his grandchild to leave him $10,000. So let's keep scrolling. Now, I know Master P has a problem with little Romeo. Now, they're both saying that they love each other, but they're not fooling with each other like that. Well, I mean, it's like that sometimes, I guess. But let me tell you one thing that I don't like what was said here. One thing that I don't like. Let me scroll back down. Yes, here it is. Right here, Master P is happy that this whole argument with his son transpired because it made him realize what he will now do with his money if anything happened to him, which is to give it all away to charity. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. And I'm not taking sides because I see fault in both sides. But that's the wrong answer, Master P. You're a grandfather now. Your grandfather didn't give it all to charity. Your grandfather thought enough of you to leave some money for his grandson. And $10,000 now, you don't cut it. You have this inflation. So that's 
translate to now or 10 years, 20 years, that needs to be in place for your grandchildren because you have several grandchildren. And guess what? Those grandchildren are going to have other kids. So you want to make sure your great grands are going to be okay. And guess what? I'm going to show you a scripture in the Bible. And I know that these people are spiritual about it. So they each have responsibility, not only to their children, but to their grandchildren. Okay. So what Master P is saying here is what a lot of the ultra wealthy people are talking about. I just thought it was crazy like 10 years ago when I heard about this mess. And I said, huh, something's not right. All these rich people talking about giving their money away. I'm talking about billionaires, multi-millionaires don't want to leave their kids anything. And these people, it's not like they don't have kids. They're talking about not leaving their kids anything. That's weird to me. I'm sorry. As much as I work, as much as I do, I'm going to make sure my daughter has. She's not starting from zero. My clients, I make sure we put policies in place so their kids don't start from zero. We are headed into the great, we are our spiritual beings. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, we're the most spiritual people out here. So we have, um, God has given us what we need to do. He has given us this specific instruction on what we need to do. So it's nothing that we just want to make up or we want to do. We each have been given instruction on what to do. So um, here I'm taking this from BibleHub.com. It's the new international version, just to keep it simple, make it easy to understand. But take out your Bible. I don't care what Bible you have. Take it out. Turn to Proverbs chapter 13. Now, the verse that I talk to my clients about is Proverbs 13, 22, which talks about generational wealth. However, I think this family and any family who may be dealing with a family feud or have animosity towards one another, who don't want to fool with one another, who don't feel like they, uh, maybe the kids are, do feel like, or maybe the parents feel that the kids are entitled, acting, acting entitled, or maybe, and maybe the kids are upset at the parents that they're not leaving enough, whatever it is. That family, both sides, need to read Proverbs chapter 13 because these scriptures apply to both sides. And I'm not going to read it and say who it applied to. And if, if it, it, hey, if it, if it fits you, if it applies to you, then it is what it is because we are all different people, right? But this is an excellent book and chapter for the Miller family to read and any family, unfortunately, may be going through this situation to read. And if you're not going through it, read it so your family will not go through it, okay? So I'm not going to read all these scriptures, but I am going to hit on a few. Okay, so again, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 1. A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. Now, uh, verse 3. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Number five, the righteous hate what is false, but the wicked makes themselves a stench and brings shame on themselves. Okay. Number seven, one person pretends to be rich yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor yet has great wealth. Verse 10, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Verse 18, uh, let me scroll down. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. Verse 20, walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Verse 24, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Okay, so Read the whole chapter and, and apply it to however you want to apply it. But one thing that I definitely want to stress here is verse 22. So again, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. This is amazing. This short little sentence is so packed with knowledge. It says, a good person leaves an inheritance for, his, for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. I want to look, leave it at 22A, just right here, right before that comma, right there. It says, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. All these celebrities, all these ultra wealthy people talking about just giving it to charity when they have children, they are wrong. It says, a good person leaves an inheritance not only for their children, but children's children. 
So God here is setting up three generations. That means if you have uh, wealth, that means you're good. You're generation one. You did what you're supposed to do, right? You got that wealth. You accumulated it. You have an inheritance now. You have something to pass down. And guess what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to leave it. <laughs> you're not supposed to donate it away. You're supposed to leave it. Who are you supposed to leave it for? You're supposed to leave it for their children's children. So this is amazing. So you're planning for three, you're basically planning for three generations. When you're working every day, everybody goes to their nine to five job or they have their businesses every day that they're working every day. They're working, first of all, to, to maintain what they have, right? Put food on a table, roof over their head, clothes on their back, maybe want to go on a vacation, you know, whatever they want to do. I don't know what you want to do, but you're working for that. But you're also working to create an inheritance. So you can't spend everything that you make because you're supposed to leave an inheritance. I tell my clients, if you can do that, great. Right now, it's kind of hard for people to do because of this inflation, which just been crazy these last two years. So I get it. However, there's no reason for people not on any level to have an insurance policy that can be left for your beneficiaries. Name your beneficiaries, your children's children. It sounds like what all these celebrities are going to do, which they can do. Because, I, you know, I, um, you know, have a lot of clients who want to leave, you know, uh, some wealth, you know, to a charity. You can do that as long as it has an EI, EIN number. You can leave that. So it's an option. But here it says a good person. And I know Mr. P is a good person. He does so much for uh, the community. He's always done so much for the community. I know he's a good person. I know little Romeo is a good person. I follow him on Facebook too. They just seem like a great family. Okay. And so I just want them to read the scripture because this can really help not only the Miller family out, but since they do so much for our community, they are both role models. You know, people look up to them, especially our young black men. They look up to them. And we need to see our fathers and our sons working together as a team. It's a dream team right here. I've always looked at the Miller family as a dream team. And we need to get back to that because they are role models. And I know people are go, you know, your own family supposed to be a role model. That's fine. But let's just keep it real. It is what it is. We are living in this type of society where if you're a celebrity, okay, you that means you're a role model. If you have a blue check mark next to your name, you're an influencer, you're a role model. If you have a lot of wealth, you're a role model. So we can say all this and the other, but that's what it is. And so I just want them to think bigger than they are. It's, 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 this is greater than themselves. Master P has grandchildren. Even if he's upset at the sun, leave it to your grandchildren. You can do that. You can do, I do it for people all the time. You can do that. And so um, we're heading into a season, everyone, where it's going to be very difficult. People have been complaining these last two years about inflation you haven't seen anything yet. You, the, America hasn't really seen hyperinflation like that. You know, if you want to know what that looks like, go talk to some people from Zimbabwe. Go talk to some people from Argentina or Venezuela. You know, we haven't seen anything like that. Okay. Um, they've already been telling us about food shortages, water shortages. I'm telling you right now about the intensity of these storms are getting stronger and stronger. I'm telling you now that insurance carriers are going out of business. So this is not the time for our families to dissolve. This is a time for us to come together, unite, use our talents, our resources, our skills to build the wealth that we create and accumulate. We're going to leave that and pass it down from generation to generation. Because guess what? The trajectory that we're on right now is headed to zero. And it's going to happen before 2053. Because we're too busy looking at everything else. We're too busy fighting. We're too busy complaining. And we're not paying attention to the numbers. So I just wanted to leave that with you today. Tis the season to be insured. All right. Make sure you're insured when it comes to your home. Make sure you have the proper coverage. Don't half step on this stuff, you all. Everybody wants to go travel. Everybody wants his nice clothes. Everybody wants to go out to eat. You need to make sure you're property is properly protected. Okay. Also, you need to make sure your car, your vehicle that brings you to point A to point B has the most precious resources, your family in it. 
It's a place that you go to your work to make money to provide for your precious re- your people, your, your family. Um, you need to make sure that's properly protected, okay? And then you need to make sure you're properly protected with life insurance, and something happens to you, you don't want your family starting from zero, okay? If you're in middle class, you don't want to be impoverished. If you're impoverished, you definitely don't want to be negative zero. So that's the thing, too. People say, oh, I'm so used to starting from zero. I've, I've got it from the mud and this and that. Okay, we, we've done with those days. <laughs> we shouldn't be getting anything from the mud. Your future generation shouldn't be getting anything from the mud, right? Let's, let's, let's build from that. You know, I'm not saying don't challenge them. I'm not saying leave them the world, but please don't leave them just nothing because this new world that we're entering, it's not going to be kind to them. It's not going to be kind to them. And as you see here, we have a responsibility. Let's fulfill that responsibility. Okay. All right. I appreciate y'all today. Just sticking with me through that. I know it sounds like I'm busting a little bit, but I think I am. I just know what's coming ahead and nobody's warning us, especially the black uh, population. No one cares. Our politicians know this. I know for a fact they know this because they talked about it during the 2020 debate. Andrew Young even brought it up several times when he was debating and when he was on The Breakfast Club. Our politicians know that we're headed to zero by 2053 and they don't care. You don't hear anything of them talking about it. They're talking about, I don't know what they're talking about, chitlin dinners, turkey dinners, coat drives. I don't know what they're talking about, but they're not talking about our wealth. And we're not talking about income. We're talking about wealth. It's coming to zero. How is, your, how is our life going to be? We already see how our life is now. <laughs> and we're literally at the bottom of lists that are great and at the top of every list that's bad. And then some of us have money right now. So can you think about it as a collective when we have zero, what our life is going to be like? And it's coming. And you see how inflation, everything's going through the roof. And at the same time, our wealth is going to zero. We don't even have time to entertain these type of conversations about not getting along with our parents, not getting along with our children, not getting along with our grandchildren, not getting along with our neighbor, not getting along with anyone in our community, not getting along with anyone in America, not getting along with anyone in the world. We're going to have to come together as a world, really, and pull our resources together to be able to make it through what's coming. Okay? So if you're wise, I know you'll take heed. If not, Proverbs talks about fools. It talks about it. Psalms does too. And I'm just saying, either you're going to be wise or you're going to be a fool. And I know if you're listening to this coverage of a coffee session, if you're a subscriber of AI Mutual, you are a very wise person. So thanks so much. I do hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. I look forward to talking to you uh, for the new year because it's, a, it's, hey, it's about us doing the work. 2023 is about us doing the work. We have accumulated all this knowledge. But only applied knowledge is going to help you out. Here at AI Mutual, we absolutely love coffee. You know what time it is. Time for this week's Coffee Shop Spotlight. Today, we are on site at Minuti Coffee in College Station, Texas. So today, I'm actually presenting an Italian coffee shop. So for those who have always wanted to go to Italy, this place is for you. It's very interesting because, as you know, it's the holiday season. I'm doing traveling for the holidays, and I actually was passing through Bryan College Station. And so I normally stop at this uh, Starbucks that I've been stopping at for years. Now, I haven't been through College Station, I want to say, in about three three years, four years. I think the last time I went down there was in 2017. So (laughs) I was very surprised to see this wonderful coffee shop there instead of Starbucks. So I was like, you know what? I still want coffee. It looks really cool. I'm going to go in. Of course, there was only like a couple of people there um, in the store, you know, not too many people there. Uh, And of course, the barista was very nice. So she told me the history because I was like, wait a minute, this used to be a Starbucks. So basically, this is a Minuti coffee. It's 100% 
uh, Italian coffee, but it's a 100% American uh, owned coffee shop. So I really like when you go to their website, they have a picture of Al Pacino and we know we love Al Pacino here. So I thought that was pretty cool. They have the uh, Molinari coffee brand and it is delicious, you all. It's so smooth. I loved it. And so really nice. Of course, their favorite color is red here. You see they have the fast uh, Italian cars on display there. They have the community board uh, for the local citizens in that area to post things up. They do have also a, a cafe there. So they do have the sandwiches. Um, they did not have donuts, but they did have, um, you know, pastries and things of that nature. Very convenient, beautiful area. I definitely recommend that you go there. So I'm actually going to give Minuti Coffee five stars for their excellent service. Again, the decoration there, it was really nice. You know, we didn't really get to stay because we had places to go, but it's a perfect spot uh, to be able to either do your work inside. There was a college girl who was there who was asking about what time they were closing because they had holiday hours. Um, so they do have the Wi-Fi there for you to do the work inside, or they also have tables outside as well. All right, so enjoy. And then when you go, please tell them that AI Mutual referred you.